Okay, and welcome back. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about something called symbolic links. So the idea is this. Let's say, for instance, you have a program that saves the user preset files on the C drive. And it's by default in a user preset file located in the program files. And then the directory path is uh, like, for instance, in my case, it was a program called Kick2 by Sonic Academy. And the user preset files are on like program files, Sonic Academy, user preset files. There you go, like that, right? Okay, but I want to be able to save them in the My Documents folder. And so that way when I drop my My Documents folder in my external drive, it copies everything in one shot like I do with every other preset that I have for all the other VSTs that I have. So it would be nice if I could somehow like drop this file, this folder into here and then maybe create a shortcut that links the program uh, to reference the presets inside of the My Documents folder, right? So you can't really, there's no real way to do that. So first of all, if I was backing stuff up in my My Documents folder, I would have a folder called Sonic Academy and inside of there, I would have all this, right? Okay, so in that case, let's put back the Sonic Academy folder over here. And essentially, this is what we've got now. So now the program is back where it was at. And I have the preset files in here. Well, why can't I just like right click in here and then tell it to create a shortcut? So that way now it's there. You see, now I got a shortcut, right? Well, it doesn't quite work like that because the system looks at it like a shortcut. Even if you change the name to exactly what it was called before, it's still a shortcut. The system cannot reference and follow a shortcut. Only a user can. So we need to figure out a way to generate some kind of link that references the folder inside of the my documents folder user presets right so there's a program called link shell extension you install it and it will let you do this i'll explain how to get it in a second but it lets you do this you got to set first of all you got to kind of set things up a little bit let me just put things the way they were originally Okay, here's the setup. This is the program. Here are the user preset files, okay? In your My Documents folder, you got a folder ready for your for backing stuff up in here, right? Okay, so what you gotta do is this. Go into it, go into the original location. You're gonna move everything over, okay? So let me just recap what's happening. In the Sonic Academy folder, it's empty. It's now located, the user preset files are now located in your, in your My Documents folder. What you're going to do is you're going to right click on here after you install this link shell extension program. You're going to pick this folder as your link source. Then you're going to right click inside of this folder and drop a junction. I'll explain the rest of the other things in a second. You're going to drop a junction inside of here. Now it was called user presets and you're done. That's basically it. Now the program works. Now you can just back up and save your My Documents folder all day long and the Sonic Academy folder, the program will actually think it's accessing the user preset files. See? Actually, look at that. You see here, it's the actual path. It's because it doesn't know that that's a link. It just thinks that that's the actual path. Okay. So if you, let's say, for instance, I write something in here like data. I save it. And I saved it accessing through this folder, right? This is what I just did. And I went in here, went in here, accessed the folder. Okay. So it's actually accessing this file right here. You see? And I can prove it. This 
folder contains the Sonic Academy and the user preset files. This is the actual Sonic Academy folder accessing these files. If I was to take one of these files and move it out, it would take it away from here. And if I put it back in again, hit refresh, it puts it right back in. So you see it works flawlessly. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys what the program is called. The program is called Link Shell Extension. If you do a Google search for it, you'll end up clicking and uh, getting to this website here. Then you click on this link over here, this one here, and it will take you down to here. You're going to install this file, this file, and then finally the actual program itself. And it's going to add the context menu that I showed you a little while ago. Okay. So first of all, let me explain what you're doing. The idea is something called symbolic links. Um, you can either use the command interpreter and use the DOS command line to type in uh, MKLINK, make link, and then you have to use the correct syntax and the extensions in order to be able to do what we just did right now with this simple little uh, program. And um, there's another one called Junction Master. I'll show you that in a second. But uh, basically, the symbolic links, otherwise known as sim links, basically what they do is they are a system shortcut and they link or point to a host destination. So you can either create a symbolic link for a file or you can create a symbolic link uh, to a folder. Actually, you create a directory symbolic link to a folder. So in Windows, what we're using is something called a junction. In Unix, they call it a hard link. Now, symbolic links, the name symbolic links, people say, oh, create a symbolic link, and then you have to ask, well, what type? And if they say just create a symbolic link to a file, then you create a symbolic link to a file. But if you create a symbolic link to a folder, you have to use something called a directory symbolic link, or uh, you use something called a junction, which is exactly the same thing. Both directory symbolic links and junctions are the same thing. The only difference is junctions go across a network, whereas a directory symbolic link will reference only the client computer. So if I made a, a link to a, a junction to a folder on computer A and I accessed it through computer B, computer B would access it. But if I create a, a directory symbolic link on computer A and I went on computer B to access it, it would actually access the local location of that same symbolic link. Anyway, you can read about that. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on it. Okay, um, let's see. So I was going to show you guys this thing called Junction Master. Okay, so Junction Master can be, first of all, it can be located on this website here. And you just click on the respective operating system version you have, 64-bit or 32-bit. Anyway, so let's, first of all, let's set up the scenario we have again. Um, you could just actually shift delete the, uh, the link you created, or you could just hit delete. You just, it'll just move it to the trash, but I use shift delete to avoid having to do that. And let's put this user folder back into here. Okay. So now we got the same situation we had before. Sonic Academy, user presets, there they are. My documents, I created a folder in my documents called Sonic Academy with nothing in it. All right. So here's what we're going to do. This folder, this window references this folder here. This window references this folder here. All right. Now remember what we did. We actually moved the folder over and created a symbolic link to it here, right? All right. So with the uh, program called Junction Master, what you're going to do 
is this. You actually have to create an identical folder inside of here, right? Called user presets. Because you're not moving anything. And what you do is you right click the actual location that it originally resides on, which in this case is the C drive. You tell, you're going to install the program. It's going to give you this context menu, and then it's going to give you something called move and then link folder to. So you're going to click on that, hit yes, and you're going to get this dialog box here. And here's the original location. This particular location on the, this one here actually references this folder here. You see? But we just right clicked on here. All right. So what we're going to do now is tell it the new directory is going to be this one here. It's going to be this one. So we have to look for it. So it's going to be located in my documents, Sonic Academy, user presets, choose OK. All right. And you choose OK. You get the dialog box here with the warning. Just hit OK. And now it converted the original file, the original folder into a symbolic link and actually moved the contents into here. You see? So now when you access this, it looks at these files. And there you go. And so if I move one file out, it takes it out. And if I put it back in again, it puts it back in again. All right. Uh, now let's say, for instance, you wanted to change the name of this folder here and call it maybe, or actually, let's say you wanted to change this one and just call it Sonic, right? Well, you're going to break the link location, right? So now when it tries to, when you try, when the program tries to access the folder, it doesn't see it because this one's referencing Sonic Academy, but you call it Sonic. So all you got to do is right click on the symbolic link, choose properties, go to link properties. And here is the name of the actual link itself. Okay. But over here is the target location. Now notice the target location is called Sonic Academy, but yours is just called Sonic. So you can change this however dramatically you need to, but in our case, we just need to get rid of that. Hit apply, hit OK. And so now the link is recreated. And so now when you double click on here, there you go, right there. Perfect. So now all you got to do is just copy, essentially copy your uh, My Documents folder, and it will contain all the uh, files in there instead. Just to be a little more thorough, if you are working on, if you just created a symbolic link to a file and you copied the symbolic link to your USB drive, it would actually copy the file. If you had, like, let's say, for instance, here's a file. So if I created a shortcut to it and you copy the shortcut to the USB drive, it would just copy, it would just duplicate the shortcut. But if you created a symbolic link to the file, let's say, for instance, we chose to uh, pick this as the link source, and then we dropped it as a symbolic link, you would get this dialog box. And the symbolic link would be dropped. I'm using two screens. So the screen capture only captures one screen, but it actually dropped the symbolic link on my second screen. So there you go. So now if you copied this file to a USB thumb drive, it would actually copy this file only. It would actually be this file. So the system treats this like the original file. You understand? And again, to delete this file, you could just either delete, hit delete button, or I like to hit shift delete so that way it doesn't move into the uh, recycle bin. Okay. Okay, and that's about it. So I, I hate asking for people to subscribe because if you want to subscribe, you'll just subscribe on your own. But I figure if I say it, maybe it'll just remind you. If you found this video helpful and you learned something from it, you know, give it a like and a subscribe or leave me a comment in the comment section below. 
And, uh, and that's about it. All right. Well, in that case, uh, good luck with everything in the future and thanks for watching.